Continuing with assignment two, our collaged creature. So we were talking about how to think about creature design in terms of silhouette and what our inspirations were in the last video. Good thing to look at. So Pokemon, the whole Pokedex, they do a good job just showcasing silhouette. I'll just show you that really quickly. So I especially liked this Pokemon. And I'm just going to show you how much creature design relates to just the overall structure, not to the Let's see. It doesn't relate to the details. So good creature design is all about making strong decisions. You're not going to have a good creature design that has a ton of really cool visual textures and interest and oddities and contrast in every part of the body because then it just becomes kind of all washed out. So this character definitely makes a decision towards the front end and the head with that mane, and then everything else is pretty streamlined behind. So however you look at it as a silhouette, as squinting, it's gonna be about the silhouette shape and where the focal points are that matters. So that's what we're going to try to optimize here. So I'm inspired by this shape, but I don't need to follow these details. It doesn't matter at all if the eyes look that big or if they're blue or if the, the color scheme is the same. What I'm paying attention to are these really strong kind of claws the long extended legs that look more like almost deer legs to me, the mane around the head, the mandible that's kind of like a, a long fox mandible. And then this tail feels fairly generic and pretty tough to composite. It's like a squirrel tail. So I might want to do a slightly different thing with that, maybe even make it smaller and, and de-emphasize the back even more. Other ones that are inspiring me, you know, this is a different kind of fantasy creature design, concept design approach. But notice this makes a lot of the same similar focal point decisions, right? It's all about the oddity of the head and the textures and silhouette around the head and then the claws. Everything else is kind of minimized. And then this one, same thing. I can be inspired by the way it handles transitions, transitions into the shoulder joints, into the hip joints uh, on the neck. Transitions are incredibly important in creature design, like where one joint hits the spine or transitions to another feature. And these kind of ideas for, for shapes at transitions, like at the tail, allow me to do things like take a, a reptilian tail and attach it to a fur body. If you do that without any kind of transitional shape, it's going to look really obvious. So these are the things that are going to inspire me. Once I've done my sketch, I want to focus on a few things in particular. I want to focus on first the shape of the cranium. The cranium is the fishbowl that surrounds the brain, right? And this is true in vertebrate creature designs, creatures with skeletons. But also, let's say you're doing an insect creature design. They have an exoskeleton, but they still have a cranium shape, right? They have some sort of head. That is the focal point. I always start with the cranium because that is the focal point of the creature. Craniums can take on different shapes, but they tend to be ovals, right? If it's like a rock creature, maybe it's, it's more rectangular or more polygonal. Then on animals, you don't have the, the human kind of egg-shaped head, which is a mandible that's underneath. You have more like a muzzle shape that goes in front of the cranium. So that's really the only difference between a bird and a fox and a horse and a lizard. It's the shape of the mandible. 
of the jaw. You can think of it as the, the muzzle or the maw of the creature. Once you've drawn those shapes, and maybe I can just do this quickly in Photoshop and show you what I mean, because you do not need to be great at drawing to do this effectively. You need to have inspiration, and then you need to be looking for these same anatomical features. So let's do it, and you can sketch it digitally, or you can take you know a screen grab of something you've you've drawn traditionally. So if I'm looking at my references, you can see it's especially based on this pose, but I'm going to change the cranium size a little bit and change some of uh, how I want the features to work, like the tail and some of the mane. I'll do this on a new layer. Do it in a bold black brush. Let's make it nice and big. And let's make it pressure sensitive. So I'm using a tablet. Yeah. The only pain with digital sketching is setting it up between different jobs. All right. So first thing I'm paying attention to is the cranium. Just that shape. Then I want to look at my reference and I want to ask myself, which way is the cranium facing? If the cranium were like a beach ball or an egg, which way is it angled? And if I drew a line, so if the cranium was just facing me like this, I want to draw a line like that and like that around it. These are called the direction lines. So this cranium is facing this way. So the direction line that splits it down the middle, you know, between the eyes for this creature is slightly curved. And it's looking slightly down. So this line is slightly curved. So that gives me a cranium in space. And it's not as tough to draw as you might think. Then I have the mandible shape. And the mandible shape goes onto the cranium. And you can be really rough with this. You can define it in planes if you want, like so. But my mandible shape is fairly flat and angular, almost like a duck, except that it's got this channel for the nose. So if I was going to do simple shapes for this, this is a basic kind of fox head, it would look like this. Cranium mandible. Shows me that the head is looking down and where the nose is. And that gives me the eye position. Whatever size eye I want to use, they are balanced on that middle line. The next thing is the spine. The spine connects to the back of the cranium. And if the spine connects without a lot of bend in it, then you have something that's more like a crocodile or a lizard. So you can see how these same basic shapes can create completely different silhouettes, completely different creature plans. On that spine, you have some distance before you get to the neck. The neck, you have a collarbone that connects your shoulder joints. And then between that, you have the rib cage. All vertebrates have a rib cage. It's going to look really weird if your creature kind of collapses in at the chest without some structure there. Then you have a a length of distance, that's the waist, before you get to the hips. Hips can be large or small, just like the shoulders. And then you have the hip joints, just like you have the shoulder joints. And then you may or may not extend that spine through with a tail. Then you get to decide on the length of the forearms, which are usually the same length as the rib cage. And then, or not the forearms, the upper arms. And then the forearms, and then the hands, the paws, the hooves, the claws, whatever you want. And then something very common in creature design is this structure for the back leg. Because we as humans, our hips are like this. I'll draw it from the side. And our femurs go like this, down from it, to our knee, which locks, to our fibia and tibia, and then to our feet. But our feet are super complicated because we are bipedal. We walk on two feet. In most animals, this section and this section 
are here and here. And then the foot bone, what we think of as our foot, our metatarsals and tarsals are a lot longer. So if I'm gonna change a human creature into a werewolf, I'm gonna push out that femur out like that. Give myself a little bit more room here. This is going back to what I'm teaching creature design and character design and cartooning. It's fun stuff. So I might shorten the femur quite a bit. And then I might have, it depends on the creature design, I bend back with the fibia and tibia, the lower leg, and then the foot is really what gets extended. And then they are walking on their toes, right? So you'll see this. So this is kind of where the heel is. This is how dogs are, how cats are. And that's what, what horses are. So that's kind of a backwards bending knee. In order for it to look balanced, it all has to average right at the point of contact with the ground. So it's always shifting the weight back and forth. All right. So if we start with the cranium and we figure out the angle of it, and then we add the mandible, then we have to put the spine in, which goes at the back of the cranium. And you can see this has a nice little S curve to it. So this isn't like a lizard or a crocodile. This is more like a dog or a cat. And then you want to put the rib cage, depending on the angle, think about how the rib cage is angled. And then you want to think about the collarbone. The collarbone connects across the front of the rib cage. So here is the collarbone for this creature, and then you have the shoulder joints. This is called drawing through. It's like I'm drawing the x-ray of the skeletal structure. And it's incredibly helpful when we start building it. So then I draw the upper arms, the lower arms. You decide on the lengths. But again, the upper arms usually match the length of the rib cage. So if you have like a dragon, if you have a longer creature with a really long rib cage, that upper arm is also necessarily going to be longer because it all kind of works together as a power center of balance. And then you decide what kind of shape you want your hands or paws to take, right? And I'm going to give it a pretty strong silhouette with these triangular claws. But I have to find a creature that fits that. So I'm thinking badger, mole, wolverine, a creature that digs a lot. Right, next, moving from your rib cage, you have to decide how much space there is before you get to the hips and how big the hips are. And then the hips will have these joints, right? So first you have the femur, then you have the fibia and tibia, and then you have the, the foot if it's a human creature. But this works wrong, right? If you draw it like that, it's like the knee is broken and it's bending backwards. So that's why you gotta keep in mind that they are standing on their foot. So even if it looks like in this, there's just an upper leg and a lower leg. There's actually a femur here and then a joint. So it goes like this, a short femur, long fibia and tibia, and even longer kind of metatarsals, foot bone, before we get to the toes and the claws. And then this, if I'm drawing through, it's also going to be at the back, but it's kind of hidden by the other arm but I'm still gonna draw it in there so I can composite it believably. Then the tail is just gonna be extension of the spine. This tail has like a lot of shape, but I might change that and make it more minimal like that. So I can really focus on the ears, which make it look more fox-like, and this idea of some sort of shaped mane where I'm thinking I'll use yellow fern and fungi. So that's my design. I know where the eye is going to go. I don't need to know details yet. I have the structure. So understanding how to sketch the joints is pretty important. For how we're going to put it all together. So it's a combination of sketching by hand and then refining it with digital sketch.